Picked a hell of a night for a sleepover. The weather's supposed to break in a few hours. So we can all go home and get back to our lives? I'm gonna imagine air quotes around that last part because I feel like they were implied. So I'm guessing there's gonna be a rain check on the giant squirt gun battle? I rest my case. So when is Heather meeting us? Well, hopefully before the storm picks up again. Why is Heather meeting us? I am meeting with my literary agent tomorrow. And I need advice. She's talked to all kinds of people. You could just talk to Jessica. She's on a whole nother level. Didn't even need an agent. Plus, I don't want to bother her. Ah, uh, Sydney left the water guns here. Did you move this? No way. Spackler says reshelf your books, remember? Back to what I was saying earlier. Shorty's Fast Food Emporium has the best oyster po' boy this side of wherever po' boys are actually supposed to be made? Not that, though I stand by it. Uh, the thing about narratives with character versus character conflict? And when they're centered around concept, they must always end in bloodbath. You are writing a piece about it? I, I'm hoping to, but just spitballing for now. You want to help? I mean, it's not like we can leave anytime soon. Let's do it. Okay. I put a bunch of bad guy type characters together in a room during a storm and they all have weapons and we see what happens. Now, I come up with this idea before I decide who's going to be in the room, before any characterization happens. It is always going to end in contrivance, probably of the violent kind. Examples? Anything on HBO? Uh, examples from literature. The Great Gatsby. You know Fitzgerald came up with the ending before any characterization happened. Because the point he's trying to make about the illusion of the American dream will only work if the tycoon ends up with nothing, including his life. Doesn't matter if it's Jay Gatsby. The only thing that matters is that he doesn't end up with that thing. So, emphasis of theme and big ideas over characters makes you feel empty. Yet yeah, it's what sells because it's easy to swallow. And it makes folks of middling intelligence feel like intellectuals for five minutes. It's Copperfield-level illusionism, really. You have that one pre-programmed, though. Let's try some more on you. Fire away. Brave New World. Ugh, come on. The Savage is the only character left that shares the same values as the author. If Huxley doesn't kill the Savage, then he can't turn his novel into a big dissertation of dystopia. Kind of makes him sound like the same book. Hello, fellow dystopians. Do not hang that poncho on my furniture. I hate being wet. Good thing Emerson's not here, then. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Ren. Denial's a river in Mississippi. Why'd you keep her around if not for the romantic horseback ride into the sunset we all know is coming? She isn't around. She doesn't live around here. She happened to be the best choice for CNF editor, and that's that. Mm-hmm. You know, Punter had a really good question earlier. Why are you here? Advice for your meeting with Lind Literary Agency? I remember. What are you doing? Chronicling the evening's events, in case I can get a couple of stories out of it later. Am I in it? You just entered. You're being loud. You know, all of Cleaver's novels are the same. Just different names for characters, different naked ladies, the sainted white protagonist must deign to bone. Different dumb concepts for everything to revolve around. I think I'm getting depressed. It might be the weather. Hey, I wanted to read this. That's what I'll be doing while you try to come up with concept-driven stories that don't end in yawn-inducing free-for-alls. So, I haven't dealt with a literary agent, OBS, but I am good at getting people to do what I want. I don't want to get them to take me on. I want them to actually believe in what I'm doing. If the work has to speak for itself, why do they want to see you? And why did you call me? Well, after they had to drop their book deal with Matt Alexopoulos, I guess I want to make sure that I don't touch kids or have swastikas anywhere in my body. And I need you to make sure that I don't come across that way. Well, if that's all, grab a quill. Alright, we've been doing this for an hour. You win. She doesn't win yet. Let's talk about what I want to talk about. Go for it. You're my nonfiction editor. We've only just met. Tell me a thing or two. 
I'm a Scorpio. I habitually fooled my college roommate into using my toothbrush, and the sight of Matthew McConaughey's face makes me disproportionately angry. You got Ren to give you an interview after a game involving cups of vodka, and now you're on the masthead. I guess. Wait, you were fine with using that toothbrush? Hang on. Zinni and Punter's favorite way of teasing Ren involves some sort of supposed crush on you. Yeah, you should have seen the LARP. Ren almost turned into the protagonist of a romance novel. I wasn't in the LARP. Sydney, according to the needlessly long story, you told me you worked recon for Ren's team. <laughs> Strike back, Empire! What, what? Did they ever catch the Black Ghost character? The one that corralled teams into battles they couldn't win. The one that chased Ren and her sister into the same place so that they uh, have to face each other? Nope. Interesting. All right, I'm ready. Let's bring on the meeting. We've got a storm to weather first, and I still want you to admit you hired Emerson for reasons. Did you know that Ren put a trail cam in the woods and then completely forgot about it? Tell us about 5,000 photos. I found some pretty good ones of uh, someone in a black jumpsuit slinking between trees. What do you want from me? I'm not some master manipulator. You just told me that you tricked your roommate into using your toothbrush. You tricked Ren too. Just can't figure out why. There's no money or tangible reward in it, and you didn't like her back, so... It wasn't to get close to her. You have no idea what you're talking about. Not cool, Emerson. Ren thinks of you as a friend. I am her friend. I ought to shoot you in the face! This is exactly the problem. You guys hang around all day, playing games, getting Ren involved in stupid antics, refusing to shield her from toxic people. Do you even realize how special she is? Do you even realize what she could accomplish if she could just focus? Everything I did was to help her cut the crap and get back to work. So, all this is because you actually care. Well, I still feel ripped off about the squirt gun battle, so screw this touching moment! I get the joke, okay? I'd appreciate if my personal embarrassments could remain my own. Hey, I took time out of my day to help you. Sorry to keep you from pandering to 16-year-old boys on the internet, but that has nothing to do with anything. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll be the one to get you wet. Can you stop saying wet? It's getting gross. Guys, this is a waste of time and I really need to concentrate. Heather, thank you for coming over. I'm sorry I snapped at you. Hmm. Hear that? The rain stopped. I hope it's an omen for your interview. Congrats. I mean it. I'm still trying to figure out what to take away from all this. Just let it be what it was. Well, I guess I don't really know what it was. What happened in the office before you left? The storm passed and everyone was happy. Can we please just never talk about it again? So the storm And everyone was happy! I don't even know who to shoot. Here's the top of the west. Always cool is the best. He keeps alive with his core. Forty-five.